Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Certificate in Business Essentials for Successful Managers here at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. I'm joined here today with Stuart Brown, Jeff Warner, and Lindsay Thomas, who will be co-hosting with me. My name is Julia McGinn. I am the Associate Director for Enrollment Management here at SCS, and I'll be answering the enrollment questions down the line. A quick little introduction of who we are and the agenda for today. We're going to start off with the overview of the boot camp and the live online learning process and format. We'll go over what you'll learn, including some of the curriculum, talk with Stuart and Jeff about what it means to be a successful manager and what the business essentials that you'll be learning. Uh, we'll go on to Lindsay Thomas for how we support your career development with our career services built into the boot camp. And finally, we'll go over some enrollment questions, some basics on the tuition and funding, et cetera, and we'll end with any questions you may have. So we ask that you save your questions till the end, but have them ready to go once the presentation's over. We will answer them live on camera. With that, let's get started with Jeff. Thank you very much, Julia, and I'd like to extend a Georgetown welcome to everyone who is attending today over the lunch hour. Thank you very much for coming. Please enjoy your lunch. And uh, as Julia said, we are here to answer your questions, but we're gonna give you a brief overview of the program and hopefully many of your questions will be answered. I think the first question is why, why is Georgetown University offering a certificate in business essentials for successful managers as a boot camp? And well, the numbers are obvious. Uh, yesterday I went into uh, indeed.com and there are over 1.5 million manager jobs listed in the United States. Now those manager jobs may be in retail, they may be in construction, industry, government, what all economic sectors. Uh, and in LinkedIn, there are over 1.8 million manager jobs. In fact, the need for managers, uh, there's some information from the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics there, it's expected to grow about 9%, close to a million new jobs. Uh, in the next six years will open up. Uh, so there is a tremendous need. And, and for those of us who go out, uh, you will, if you go to retail, if you go to restaurants, if you go to industry services, you will you see that there is a real need. There, there are more job openings than there are qualified people to fill those job openings. So the potential is truly awesome. Next slide, please. But there's a problem, and the problem is what I call the managerial skills gap. Uh, and here are two interesting facts, one uh, from Harvard Business Review, and it says that 47%, over half of all the managers are not prepared to function well in a managerial role. They simply do not have the skills to effectively and fundamentally manage the relationships with their employees. Because after all, a manager is about, again, managing employees, building the team, getting everyone moving in the same direction to meet the goals of the organization. Then the second comment is by Gartner, and this is even more telling. Uh, it says that a Gallup poll, 70% of a team's engagement is influenced by managers and that the traditional role of a boss in command and control, you know, the Dilbert manager, is gone. Uh, we are in the third decade of the 21st century. So the manager of the 21st century is essentially a, more of a coach than a boss, someone who's able to coach their employees to success. And, and again, uh, given that 70% of a team's ability to function and produce is based on the quality of manager and that almost 50% of managers are not prepared to be managers. So there is this tremendous skills gap. While there's also a tremendous need in the economy, one and a half million jobs that are open for managers. Next slide. So to address this, Georgetown University, we spent over a year, almost 14 months in developing a boot camp. Uh, to address the needs of industry and to address the needs of people who are thinking about moving into management. Uh, and what we put together is a bundle. And this is what is a distinction between the Georgetown boot camp and many other boot camps that you may be looking at. The bundle means, A, first of all, the course, XBUS 710 Business Essentials. 
in that course is where you will learn the fundamental skills to be an effective, successful manager. But in addition to that, you need creative skills, learning how to think, learning how to solve difficult problems. And that's where Thinking to Thrive X plus 900 comes in. And Stuart Brown is gonna be talking uh, more about that. And then at career uh, coaching, uh, Lindsay Thomas will be uh, coming on a little bit later in this webinar to tell you how as a registered student at Georgetown University in our boot camp, she is there to help you prepare to advance your career or change careers. So it is a bundle. It is a bundle that is very unique. And we believe it's a winning formula for people who come and want to uh, gain the skills to be successful as a manager. Next slide, please. So what is the boot uh, camp experience at Georgetown? Well, it's, it's 10 weeks, it's an intensive experience, and it culminates in a, a credential from the university, a certificate, a non-credit professional certificate. Uh, we have spent a great deal of time scheduling uh, the boot camp to meet the hectic, busy schedules of professional learners. Uh, we've set up the curriculum and we plan to pace your work through the curriculum because we know in addition to taking your studies at Georgetown, you may be also working a job, maybe two jobs, maybe three jobs. You may have a family and other personal commitments. So how can your studies fit into that kind of schedule. And I think we have a winning formula and we're gonna explain that to you. And then lastly, I think what really differentiates Georgetown University from so many other providers is our commitment to quality education. And quality education to us means a individualized learning experience, which means small classes. The boot camp is limited to 24 students, that's it. You're not going to be sitting in a large class with dozens and dozens of other students or even hundreds of students. This is an individualized learning experience between you, 23 other classmates, and the Georgetown faculty member. And we believe that type of interaction is key to our quality learning experience. Next slide, please. So the, what will you experience? We call it live online, and we put a lot of time and research and energy into designing our live online educational experience. We believe that a great quality educational experience is not sitting in front of a Zoom camera for six, seven, eight hours. We believe we have to have a human-centered approach. We're humans, and as humans, we have so much attention span, but yet at the same time, we want to reach out, we want to connect, we want to have a socialization process, and we want to be able to be part of the learning process. At the same time, we can use our technology to reach people across the United States and in fact, around the globe. And uh, I think uh, Stuart Brown will tell you about some of the students in his class from overseas. So that makes a very interesting learning environment. It makes one of a small class, students from around the country and around the world. We use technology to bring us all together, but again, our educational approach is human-centered. It means interactive. It means to support you as part of the learning process. Um, and as part of this learning process, we have learned that here in 2021-22, uh, people are really looking to connect. They don't, not only want the network connections, but they want those social connections with their peers in the classroom as well as their instructors. Next slide, please. So what are the meeting times and dates? Well, XBus 710 Business Essentials meets one day a week. That's Friday evenings, Friday evenings from February 25th through March 6th, 6.30 to 9.30. And that will be an online live experience, just like you're experiencing now. There will be a lecture, there will be group discussions, there'll be presentations. It'll be very interactive and very engaged. Then after you have that live interaction with your peers, other students in the class and your instructor, Saturdays to Thursdays are spent online uh, in Canvas, which is our learning management system, where there will be case studies posted, there will be activities, some assignments, and discussions. The discussions will continue, but in the discussion board. So this is a really great mix. It's a human-centered approach to education. Friday nights, 
absolutely. You have that personal live connection with other professionals as well as your instruction instructor. Then Saturdays through Thursdays, depending on your time, you are self-directed in your study in the classroom on Canvas. So we think that is a winning combination for the busy professional in 2021-22. Thinking to Thrive, again, this is the class where you will learn how to think, where you learn how to solve problems. You will hone your analytical and critical thinking skills. Uh, that will be online in Canvas, uh, but Mr. Brown will also be holding uh, some scheduled video conferencing, again, to make that human connection between our Georgetown instructors and you. Next slide, please. So what will you learn? Uh, weeks one through 10 are listed there. You can also uh, click and go into our website and there's more detail given to you. But we've done a lot of study into what, what does a successful manager need? What are the skills that are needed? And not only needed, but we read literally thousands of job postings in LinkedIn and uh, the other online job boards. And we read several major reports about industry and government. And what people are looking for, the manager of the 21st century, they're looking for someone who can lead. They are looking for someone who has an appreciation for diversity and inclusion. They are looking for an effective communicator. They are looking for someone who can be innovative in their thinking to solve problems within the organization. You also need to understand a little bit about marketing. So whether or not you uh, do marketing uh, on a daily basis as a manager, the idea is you probably will interface with a marketing team. So it's really important to understand the role of marketing to advance what your organization wants to do. Again, you'll be leading people. And uh, how do you influence and motivate performance? This is really, in week seven, such an important topic today. Uh, week eight, collaborating, negotiation, and resolving conflict. I think all of us that have been in the workforce for a while knows that on occasion, uh, there can arise conflict. And really the successful manager can recognize that and can mitigate and can form an environment in which people are collaborative and positive. Uh, again, the idea is to create an environment where you want to get up and go to work and you really appreciate what you're doing and you know you're appreciated by your organization. Again, most managers will have to manage budgets at some level and resources. So we cover that in week nine. And then in week 10, again, we go to problem solving. As a manager, a day will not go by that you will not need to solve problems. And we're gonna give you some tools uh, to help you solve those problems and be a successful manager. Next slide, please. We have put together a team of four outstanding instructors uh, to teach business essentials for successful managers. Uh, Bawanda White, uh, again, has over 22 years of experience in financial institutions. She is a graduate from our Institute of Transformational Leadership here at Georgetown University, and she is a professional coach. Jim Lindsay uh, received his MBA from Oxford University. He is uh, a CEO of several uh, businesses, and he has uh, many, many years of practical experience in leading organizations and marketing. Uh, Dr. Douglas McCabe is Professor Emeritus uh, from McDonough uh, School of Business here at Georgetown University. Uh, Doug McCabe, again, is a renowned um, consultant, management consultant, uh, and uh, we are so glad that uh, Doug uh, has come out of retirement and is willing to teach for us is this. And then Stort. Stort has many, many years of experience uh, in all of the uh, economic sectors, both the government, military, private sector, and nonprofit sector. And uh, uh, his, his many, many years of experience is absolutely gonna be invaluable. So we brought these four individuals together who collectively have, uh, I shouldn't say this, but they do, they have collectively over a hundred years of high level managerial experience uh, from coaching to marketing, to leadership, to negotiations, to learning how to solve different 
difficult problems. So we're very, very proud of this faculty team. And uh, again, as I said, here at Georgetown University, we think we, we have assembled some of the best in the field to be your teachers. Next slide, please. Now the tech requirements, if you're seeing today's uh, webinar, you have the requirements that are needed. Uh, obviously you need a video as well as a microphone. Uh, many students say, well, do I really need that? And the answer is absolutely yes. We're trying to replicate the classroom experience. You will be in video in real time discussing case studies, uh, having debates, uh, doing presentations. So uh, Friday nights, it is absolutely essential that you are part of your class, of your cohort in real time with the use of video. Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to introduce my esteemed colleague, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Thank you very much, Jeff. <clears throat> and thank you very much for emphasizing how old I am. I appreciate that. Uh, there are some places where age and experience count, but um, we'll talk about that as we go along. I am the adjunct professor who is teaching Thinking to Thrive. And in this case, <clears throat> we're gonna do it in an asynchronous fashion. But I'd like to start off my little talk by asking you a question. <clears throat> Have you ever seen someone in your organization or in public life make a terrible decision? Or have you ever made a decision that you later regretted? The answer for most of it is yes. We at Georgetown know that everybody makes decisions every day. And in our, in our academic offering, we ought to have a course that would help our students to make better decisions and to better understand how and why others are making the decisions they are. So this is how Thinking to Thrive was born. Next slide. <clears throat> Um, this is the fifth iteration of Thinking to Thrive. It's gotten better with each one of the uh, previous iterations. We designed this course to be a survey course to introduce the students to the various decision-making processes, methodologies, and tools. We're not going to show you or tell you or how to think. We are going to point up ways, hopefully, to make you think better, to help make you make better decisions. So. We want to show you the different processes and how they can fit together <clears throat> and combine to make these better decisions. Our teaching processes include um, lecture, reading, video, podcast, online forum discussions, and case study. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. XM, XCOM 904, Thinking to Thrive, uh, is a seminar. We'll have four asynchronous modules in Canvas. Uh, this will help you balance your workload with your other course and the various other commitments you have in life. And I can sympathize. I would have been an adult learner for many, many years and has carried as many as three jobs and a course or two at the time. So the seminar will run February 25th, 2022 through May 6th. So that's really four sessions. There'll be an online forum discussion for each session and one-on-one uh, -on -one or group synchronous sessions are offered at your request. <clears throat> so if you want to talk to me, if you want to get online, and, and have that individual experience, I'm here. That's part of the deal. Next slide, please. So these are the learning objectives, objectives, the things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the natural decision process. That's the one that everybody's hardwired to do. That's the one that keeps you alive. So you'll jump out of the way when that tiger comes running at you. It's great for things like that, but it can get us into trouble. And we'll talk a lot about how to frankly overcome some of the issues that it provides. We're gonna talk about thinking fast and thinking slow and the concepts put forth by Dr. Daniel Kahneman, fascinating book, one that you probably ought to have in your library. And he breaks down the, the, the human decision process in a very sensible, logical fashion. We're gonna talk about bias and fear in decision-making, how to overcome them, how to recognize them. A huge amount of decisions made are based on bias and fear, and we need to understand that so we can overcome it, hopefully with rationale. And we're gonna talk about the standard decision processes and tools. We've got frameworks and tools and how they mesh together. We're gonna to talk about analyzing problems and specifically ethics and decision-making. Uh, there's an ethical portion to every decision, whether we talk about it or not, because most of us come to the table with a prearranged, preconceived set of ethics, not always the same. And we'll talk a little bit about how that can get in our way and how it can help us. And as I said, we're gonna develop it and implementing decisions. That's the frameworks, the processes, and the tools, how they fit together. We're gonna to talk very specifically about testing decisions before implementation. That's wargaming. Uh, I have a military background as well as a civilian one, and I've done dozens and dozens and dozens of these war games uh, in the military, and I brought that over to my commercial clients. I've been a consultant for years, and it's an excellent way to test your decisions before you actually implement them. 
And then we talk about the decision implementation process, often called change management. Once you've got your decision, you've got to sell it. You've got to make it work and the various ways that we do that. Um, this is a great course. It's a lot of fun in the asynchronous mode. I think you're really going to enjoy it. But again, we want to keep to the uh, capability to get to your professor. So I will be accessible to you pretty much at any time. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to introduce Lindsay, Lindsay Thomas. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Um, as Stuart mentioned, my name is Lindsay and I am the Director of Integrated Career Development for our Digital Skills uh, and Business Centrals Boot Camps. At the School of Continuing Studies, our students have a wide variety of professional goals, from making a career change to individuals hoping to grow in their current role. And I think you'll find that career services cater to each of those populations. So my job is to bridge what you're learning in the classroom with your professional goals. And to that end, the most important service that I offer in career development are one-on-one -on -one coaching appointments. So whether you're looking to move up in your current organization or you'll be conducting a job search, uh, I'll be a resource for you through every step of those processes. In our first meeting, we'll take an extensive look at your background to draw out your most relevant professional skills and experiences, uh, create a cohesive narrative around the prior experiences that you bring, the skills that you're learning through the certificate, and then where you hope to go professionally. If you are conducting a job search, we'll identify individuals in your network to reach out to, companies of interest and some common job databases. And together we'll polish your cover letters and resumes with tips and tricks to help you stand out, conduct mock interviews, and discuss how to handle salary negotiations and offers so you can get the best possible package. If you're looking to move up in your current organization, uh, then we'll assess the promotion process at your current company, create goals around what kind of promotion you're looking for. So whether that's a title change, change in responsibilities, uh, moving up into an existing position, or perhaps you have a proposal for a new position you like to create. Uh, and then I'll work with you on making that case for a promotion to your boss uh, and gathering those supplemental materials to really make a strong case for yourself. So my job is to help you put your best foot forward and to coach you through that process. And I think you'll find that the real value add is that individualized look at your professional strengths and interests and how to communicate that value to others. Uh, in addition to career coaching, you also have access to a system called Handshake. Uh, Handshake is kind of like LinkedIn for campus recruitment. So in that system, you'll find job postings from thousands of different companies, uh, as well as events happening across Georgetown. The really nice thing about our campus is that we have several different career centers. Uh, so depending on you know, what industry you're in, um, you'll be able to access not only the career events that I put on, but also what some of the other career centers are, are doing um, through things like alumni panels, um, as well as employer events. We do put on uh, a lot of events throughout the semester across campus. So there are alumni and industry panels where you can hear kind of career paths that other individuals have gone on to do. Uh, and then I do host employer events as well, uh, which is typically either the employer will give an hour long presentation about the company and the roles they're hiring for, uh, and then have time for questions and answers at the end or we'll do kind of one-on-one -on -one informational interviews where I'll set you up with the recruiter for a 10 to 15 minute conversation to talk about the roles that they have available. And you can kind of make that initial connection with the company. Um, so that is a, br a brief overview of the career services that are offered uh, and happy to answer any questions that you all have at the end as well. Uh, and I will hand it back to Julia. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi everyone, in case you missed it earlier, uh, my name is Julia McGinn. I'm the Associate Director of Enrollment Management here, and I'm going to go over the nitty gritty of everything involving enrollment, signing up for classes, tuition, etc. Uh, so first, the Business Essentials whole bootcamp, everything, is $2,995, and that's for everything all included, all the course materials are included, uh, that is a flat rate. 
Next is funding options. So we don't have any scholarships or grants associated within Georgetown, but we do accept outside scholarships. You'll just have to make sure that they are applicable to non-credit. We know some are very specific, but we have many other funding options that are listed here. And these are all available on the website, including uh, tuition discounts such as alumni discounts, or if you're a federal government employee, there's a 10% discount. Uh, we have a list of private education lenders on the website as well for those of you that might be interested. And we also accept, excuse me, uh, we accept VA benefits for most of our programs. You can inquire with me later about that as well. I can double check. And you can also register for this course right now and pay now and be done with it. Uh, this is made up to be like online retail. You make a profile, add courses to a shopping cart and check out, and then you are done. Uh, we have included a little blurb over here that you may be eligible for um, some IRS uh, discounts or IRS qualified education expenses is what I meant, sorry. Um, you can consult with your tax preparer though. We are not at liberty to provide advice. We are not the experts here, but please consult with your IRS um, or qualified person to discuss your eligibility. I'll go over just how to register one more time. Uh, it is open enrollment. There is no application required. We do require a bachelor's degree or equivalent experience. If you don't have a degree, you can just email me at pdcprograms at georgetown.edu. We have a form for you to fill out where you would submit a statement of purpose and a resume. We can review it and uh, tell you whether or not you have the equivalent experience to enroll. These are taught at a graduate level, and that is why a bachelor's degree is required. We do not require proof, though. This is an honor-based system. To register, you can click the link here. We'll be sending out the, the slide deck of this presentation, so you'll be able to click all these links uh, when you get the deck. And then you'll click Register Now, which is just like online shopping. Again, you add courses to a shopping cart, check out, and then you are enrolled. And that is it. This is what the certificate looks like. Everyone will receive either an electronic copy or perhaps a physical copy uh, when we're still printing those. It looks just like this, just like a smaller version of a degree. It'll have your name, the school's name, the title of your program signed by the dean, um, and the, you will have to request it as soon as you're done with the program. It's not an automatic process, but they normally ship out within about, I believe, six to eight weeks after you request the, the certificate, so you can have something lovely to hang on your wall. Classes start in February of next year. Uh, again, it's limited to 24 people per cohort. Uh, and now we can open it up for questions. Um, if everyone would turn their cameras on, just Jeff, Lindsay, and Stuart. And we can get started with some questions. I know I already have one that came in just a little earlier. There we go. Someone asks, they know that the materials are included, but what are the materials? That's a great question. Let me answer that. Uh, there, there are different types of materials. You're going to have case studies. Uh, you're going to have uh, readings that the instructors provided to you. In some cases, their own writings. You're going to have links to, uh, again, relevant information that is pertinent to the module in which your teacher is studying, whether it's marketing, negotiating, uh, coaching your individuals, or decision making. Uh, I know, Mr. Brown, you have developed uh, some of your own case studies and materials that you will be sh uh, sharing with uh, the students. Is that correct? That's correct. Actually, some of the uh, case studies that uh, we're going to do here are almost screenplays. Uh, they're rather uh, lengthy and somewhat uh, uh, complex, uh, but they're very real and they're developed specifically for this class. So uh, we're not downloading them from somebody else. It's written right for this material. Very good. A couple more questions coming in. And to everyone that might be typing up one, hit submit whenever you please. Um, there should be a questions panel for you to type in any new questions, and you can just keep them coming. Uh, Lindsay, I have one for you from someone. They asked if you could provide some examples of the types of companies or organizations that have been at these events or the handshake events. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so we've had companies across kind of government and as well as private sector. Um, so the Federal Mar Emergency Management Agency, uh, typically every semester will come, Logistics Management Institute, 
Blue Labs Analytics. Uh, Deloitte has posted some positions for us before where we've collected resumes. Um, there's a company called Red5 Security that we always uh, see as well with the School of Foreign Service um, that we'll invite on. So really a wide variety of uh, employers um, but also, you know, if you are interested in a particular company and they're not on campus, I can absolutely help you in kind of finding a Georgetown alumni to connect with uh, or, you know, any other kind of recruiters or networks. We can kind of help you find an in at any particular organization you're interested in, because I know uh, for business essentials, you all are coming from a wide variety of backgrounds. Uh, so you might have a particular industry that you're most interested in. Very good, thank you. Let's see, a question for likely Stuart. Um, what is the in-between time looking like for these courses? So what is the average amount of work in hours, I would say, uh, is the question, that you'd be spending doing work over the week between each class session? Okay, good question. Um, for Thinking to Thrive, uh, we have planned the um, uh, presentations to run from about 60 minutes to, I think, our longest one will be close to 90 minutes. So it's an hour, an hour and a half, asynchronous. They're narrated PowerPoint and video type things. So you do that, and then there'll be a posting in a forum. Uh, the posting in the forum is, is going to vary uh, depending on how much you want to put into it. Uh, my suggestion is you could probably spend as little as 15 or 20 minutes uh, for a brief answer. Uh, but if you want to go and be more in depth, depending on you know what your desires are, you can put as much as two or three hours into it. So um, one of the reasons we're doing this asynchronously is so that you can balance your workload. Uh, and we are cognizant of the fact that you're adult learners. And as I said, I've been one myself, I understand the pressures. Uh, so we're, we're trying to hold it to a minimum, but obviously we wanna make sure that we get our point across. My background is a consultant, and I consider it my job to make sure that you understand this information when I'm finished. And hopefully that's probably more than you wanted to know. But anyway, um, Jeff, you want to talk about the other course or in terms of the time requirements? I do, Stuart. Thank you very much. So in, in terms of the course business essentials, uh, Friday night, 3R, 630 to 930. Again, that's not going to be sitting in front of a Zoom camera from 630 to 930. That's going to be lectures, presentations, breakout sessions. You may have some reading, come back. Uh, again, we're making that very dynamic, interactive. And then uh, after Friday night, uh, as Stuart points out, uh, we have planned three hours of activities between Saturday and the following Thursday. So uh, this allows you to have some self-directed study based on your time, based on your availability. So again, we spend a lot of time thinking about how can we adequately convey this information to make sure you get it to make sure the credential is meaningful, uh, but at the same time, uh, as Stork points out, be cognizant and respectful of the limited time that you have. Uh, and we think we have a winning formula, uh, a good mix between live uh, learning uh, with your faculty at, here at Georgetown, as well as your peer students in the class. Outstanding. Questions are slowing down a little bit. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions they want to submit, you can type them in the questions pane, and uh, we can answer them live on camera. Um, can you, get, while we wait for more questions to come in, do either of you or any of you have any frequently asked questions that may have been missed so far that you can think of? Julia, yeah, I, I'd like to answer one question. Why? Why Georgetown? Uh, obviously, uh, people are came here today to uh, examine what we have to offer. I'm sure you're looking at other institutions. There are many other fine institutions that offer similar uh, certificates or boot camps, but why Georgetown? And uh, the answer to me uh, is very straightforward. First of all, the quality of the education. Who will you be studying with? Uh, the size of the class, maximum maximum of 24 students. So this is not a MOOC. This is not a class where you have scores or hundreds of students in. This is a highly personalized learning experience. Thirdly, a lot of research has gone into matching our curriculum with the needs in the job market. Uh, so you're receiving a relevant uh, education. 
And and lastly, I think what what is so important about your Georgetown experience is the bundling. So not only do you get the education as to how to be a successful manager, you get the education of how to be a problem solver. Plus you have Lindsay saying, okay, you've learned all this, let's put it to use, let's advance your career. So that whole bundling experience, I think is very unique to Georgetown. And that's why. Outstanding, thank you. No questions have come in so far as of, as of right now. Uh, if there's any other FAQs that any of you would like to answer, we can address them right now. But I think that was an excellent way to, to bring more people to what we love about Georgetown and let them know why this is such a fantastic opportunity for such a, a wonderfully made program with all the, the, the great faculty members that we have here as well, the excellent um, career services that we have. Let's see. We can wait a couple more minutes for any other last minute questions, but any other FAQs that you all have that you want to address? I'm going to throw a ball towards Stuart here. <laughs> Many times students say, why am I taking thinking to thrive? What does that really have to do with being a successful manager? Well, I can, if you have not sat in an interview, you will sit in an interview where the question is asked, tell us, how do you solve difficult problems? How do you approach a problem? And uh, for many people, this is one of the most difficult questions you will get in an interview. For the graduates of this certificate, you'll have an answer. Say, well, I'm glad you answered that because I have these tools and these tools were given to me at Georgetown. Stuart, there we go. <laughs> okay. Um, what do managers do every day? I've been a manager for, um, coming on 45, 50 years. Every day you make decisions. Some of them are small, some of them are big. Some of them can be tremendous. Some of them will affect you. Some of them will affect other people people's jobs, uh, the fate of your organization going forward. Um, and my experience has led me to understand that a great many of these decisions are made probably without sufficient thought. Humans like to make decisions very quickly. It's called the natural decision process. That's the one, the fight or flight, you know, that kind of thing protects you. And that's a great thing to keep us alive if we're out in the jungle and so forth and so on. However, it'll lead us astray if we try and make complex decisions. Um, we provide a number of processes and frameworks and tools that you can use to lay over almost any problem or any decision, including the quote unquote wicked ones that don't have answers, but we've got frameworks to deal with that. And given the fact that 90% plus of human decisions are made based on fear, bias, or just let's make a decision quickly, you are going to be able to go out with a rational approach, certainly when it's called for. Uh, I had to learn this the hard way. Uh, there were no classes when I was coming up in this. We can give you this material pretty much tied up in a little bundle. And you can take it and you can rearrange it, you can adapt it, and you can tailor it to your own needs. It's, it's a fantastic program. I have uh, used some of this in bits and pieces with my clients over the year. I've used it with my banking clients when I was in that. Of course, in the military, we spent a lot of time making decisions and some of those can be very expensive, not just in money, but in life. So you need to pay attention. So this is heavy stuff in some ways, but on the other hand, it's actually fun because we're going to, work on real problems. We're gonna work on real world stuff. Uh, this is the kind of thing, it, it helps fill your, fill your toolbox. Every manager has a toolbox. This is gonna give you several more wrenches and screwdrivers. I can't put it better than that. And talking about making a good decision, I invite everyone who's attending this webinar to think about one of the biggest factors. How many other institutions have a, a, a live person that you can actually send an email to and will respond. Lindsay, again, we think that she is the, a critical part of the learning experience here at Georgetown. Her, she is a real person. She's just not a database. Uh, 
that that you can contact that you can send an email with she'll be in contact with you so you have this personalized attention and lindsay please excuse me for uh, defining you as a real person but but you know what i mean there are many places where you can simply post a job and that's it you provide so much more support and experience than simply saying, okay, here you have access to this uh, job uh, bank, or here you have access, we're going to post your job here. You do provide personalized services, right? It's the human touch. <laughs> uh, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, I guess to give a little bit more background, um, I do send out kind of weekly newsletters with upcoming events and things like that. But in terms of appointments, you know, I'm available whenever fits your schedule. So if you're working full time and you would like to meet at night, like um, available whenever suits you you all. Um, and you do have access to career services for a full year. So if you're planning to kind of take the certificate and then launch a job search or, or move up in your organization, uh, we can meet as many times as you'd like for that year to kind of talk through your goals and interests and, and how things are progressing for you and come up with strategies to help you get where you want to go. And that's all part of our human-centered approach here at Georgetown. Uh, there, there are real people, and you're not on your own, and we are here to not only help educate you, but to help support your advancement. And that's our mission, and that's the human-centered approach at Georgetown University. So as you make your decision where am you going to study as a professional learner, think about uh, when you make that decision, who offers the best human-centered approach to education and advancement? Outstanding. Well, questions have slowed uh, slowed down. No more have been coming in. I thank you all for attending this webinar. And again, everyone will get a handout of the slide deck via email, as well as the recording of this presentation for you to watch back at a later date if you wish. Thank you all so much for joining us one last time. And any parting words from anyone? Just hope to see everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, in class, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have an excellent week.